Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So in today's episode, I'm going to be installing Linux Mint 20 on my hard drive. Now the current system that I have set up is a dual boot system. And so on one hard drive, I have Linux Mint 19.3. And then on the other hard drive, I have Windows 10. And so what I want to do is replace my existing version of Linux with this brand new version. But at the same time, I want to keep this dual boot set up so then I can use Windows 10 whenever I need it. Now, if you're not familiar with how to set this up, I do have a video where I show you how I set up my dual boot system. If you wanted to see that, I will leave that video in the description area below. Now, before we get into this, I just want to make sure that if you are thinking of doing something similar, that you have backups of all your data. So that's very important that you do that. And then the other thing is, you're definitely going to have to download the version of Linux Mint and then make a bootable USB stick. Now, if you're not familiar on how to do that, I do have a video below where I show you how I did that on my Linux Mint system. And also, there's many other videos on YouTube that show you how to do this. So let's go ahead and get into this. And so the first thing that I like to do is I want to unplug all the hard drives that I'm not going to be installing Linux on. I want to make sure that this doesn't affect any of my current data. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unplug all the hard drives that don't have Linux Mint on it because that's really where I'm going to be installing the brand new version of Linux and I don't want to accidentally overwrite my existing drive so I'm going to go ahead on the other side and I'm going to disconnect my Windows 10 and also storage hard drives. So on this other side this is my storage drive and right here is actually my Windows 10 it's on this drive right here so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the power to both of them uh, to make sure that I don't accidentally uh, overwrite the data here so that's one and then here is the other one so now all my drives are disconnected except for my Linux drive which is where I'm going to be installing Linux Mint 20 so now I'm going to plug in my Linux Mint 20 USB stick and I made sure that my BIOS boots up from my USB stick so let's go ahead and start that up okay so now I'm starting up my machine Hopefully the Linux Mint installation prompt comes up. There it is. So it is start Linux Mint 20 cinnamon or there's a compatibility mode. So I'm going to go ahead and just start Linux Mint 20 and we'll go ahead and press enter. All right, here is Linux Mint. So everything looks like it works. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and uh, install Linux Mint so here's install Linux Mint now if you have gone through this before it's a fairly simple process and since I have disconnected everything it should be pretty easy because I only have one drive that it's going to see so I'm going to choose English and then English for my keyboard layout and then I'm also going to install multimedia codex as well And here's the important part. It sees that there's already Linux Mint 19.3 Trisha on this drive. So I could erase, reinstall, install Linux Mint 20 alongside, or I can erase this and install Linux Mint. So this would delete everything on that drive. And so this is actually what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything and put in Linux Mint. So I'm going to go ahead and install now. So that means this is going to be an empty drive with, hopefully, a Linux Mint 20 successfully installed. So let's go ahead and install this right now. Okay, so the install is done. So I can continue testing or restart now. I'm going to go ahead and restart now. And then it should ask for me to remove the USB stick and then press enter. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the installation medium, then press enter. So now I'm going to press enter. I've just removed it. So let's see if Linux Mint 20 starts up on this single hard drive. And then afterwards, I'm going to try to plug Windows 10 hard drive back in to see if the dual boot still works. Probably won't, but we'll go ahead and look at that once it starts up. So there is the Linux Mint logo, thankfully. All right. So I'm going to put in my password. Okay, so Linux Mint 20 has been 
successfully installed on this hard drive but now we're going to go ahead and see if the dual boot still works once i go ahead and plug in windows 10 hard drive um, i don't think it's going to work because we're going to have to set up some stuff in grub but let's go ahead and see what happens for serious youtubers check out tubebuddy the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below so now what I'm doing is I'm going to plug this Windows 10 drive back in and then I'm going to see whether or not it's going to see this other drive and we could do the dual boot. Probably not, but let's go ahead and test it out. And so restart at the machine and then I'm going to hold down escape to get into the grub menu. Let's see if that works. Yeah, I don't see anything there. Okay, that didn't work as I expected. But it just loaded up Linux Mint, which is what I expected. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments uh, to the Grub menu within Linux Mint. And at least whenever I go to the home screen right here, I could see the Windows 10 hard drive right here. So if I actually mounted it, yeah, this is everything within Windows 10. So it actually sees the drive, but I'm going to have to set some things up in Linux Mint to make sure that this shows up under the grub boot menu and then I could choose Windows 10 and everything should work just like it did before okay so now we're in my Linux Mint 20 desktop so if you look here Linux Mint 20 cinnamon and if you also look here there's two drives that are mounted so if I go into my folder I could see that there are two drives here and it actually belongs to my Windows 10 hard drive which I have partitioned here is the main one where we have all our program files and everything else and I also have a second partition so I can definitely see the drives it's just that whenever I boot this up under grub I don't see Windows 10 as an option at least not yet so the first thing I'm going to do is okay, I'm going to bring up a terminal and what you want to do is type this in sudo os-prober and so what this is going to do is it's going to see whether or not it can recognize the Windows hard drive or if you have it partitioned and there it is it sees it so there it sees EFI Microsoft boot and so it definitely sees it but we need to add this to the grub bootloader and so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to our folder here and you could go to your file system and then under ETC and then under default is where all the grub options are so there is a grub file here now you can edit this through command line or you could do it through the GUI which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back up and under this default folder I'm going to right click and then open as root. So I'm going to put in my password. And so now whatever I edit here it's just like me doing it in command line. And so I prefer to do it this way it's just a lot easier. So now I can open up the file. So this is going to be very important here. So if you notice here, there are some options on top. So there's grub timeout. And right now it's grub timeout style hidden. So what that means is the grub menu will not show up whenever you reboot your system unless you hold down escape. So what I want to do here is I actually want to see the grub menu options. So I'm going to put a hashtag in front of that. And then there's also grub timeout. Right now it's zero seconds. And so it doesn't give you any time to see the grub menu options. And so I'm going to put that as 10 seconds. Okay, so those are the changes that I want. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out so it's no longer hidden. And secondly, I'm going to add 10 seconds to the timeout. So it gives me 10 seconds to choose an option whenever Grub comes up before the system loads. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now this file is saved. So our Grub file has been updated. But now we also want to update this in our system. So I'm now, I'm now going to put in sudo update and then dash grub and I'm going to press enter great so now Windows has been added to the grub menu and now we're going to go ahead and just restart our machine to see whether or not we could see the Windows hard drive okay so I'm going to go ahead and restart my machine and hopefully we'll be able to load up into Windows so I'm going to restart and the grub menu should come up after my BIOS loads up. 
All right, so there's Linux Mint 20, and there's Windows Boot Manager, and so it did show up, and now I'm going to try to load up Windows. Awesome. There is Windows 10. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And now we've successfully installed Linux Mint 20, and the dual boot still works. And so that is it for this particular tutorial. If you actually had any thoughts on this or any other ways in which you set up your system, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my tutorials for Linux, I do have an entire playlist for that. I'll leave that in the description area below as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you get access to additional videos and content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.